really slow and careful. I'm just gonna shoot back and I'm not gonna try to move at all. If you can hear me, you can tell it's challenging. But what we don't want is to like shift and extend. I can do this very easily if I just allow my body to shift and find stability. Like here. Hey, today we're gonna to be talking about bird dog, but on our forearms. Why was this really important? Well, sometimes when we get too many joints involved in something, things can kind of just get a little bit screwy. Also for people who have really underactive or weak serratuses, this is kind of a really great drill because if we think too much about the elbow and wrist, too many other muscles can get involved. We wanna really just focus on the one joint, the glenohumeral and scapulothoracic joint. Okay, so kind of two joints, but one shoulder complex that really is gonna help control that serratus and shoulder stability. All the other principles of the bird dog here are really gonna stay the same, although note that this is gonna be different, so you may find unique challenges in this variation that you haven't found in other variations. So, without further ado, here's the setup. You're gonna find a nice mat, or if you don't mind being on something hard, you don't need the mat. You're gonna place your forearms on the ground, and you're gonna place your hands flat on the ground. One thing that's gonna be really important is to push through all of your knuckles evenly. A lot of people, when they put their hands on the ground, they'll peel up like that, okay? We want equal pressure through all the knuckles. We want all those calluses that you may have on your hands flat on the ground. We wanna create a solid foundation with our hands, okay? From here, we're gonna lay our forearms down, okay? We're gonna be slightly wider than shoulder width, but really we just want the elbows out underneath the shoulder. That means we don't want it out wide, we don't want it too far in, we don't want them out in front of us, we don't want it behind us. Hands and drop. From here, I want my feet slightly turned out so they're not gonna be straight, they gonna be slightly turned out. That's just gonna be a lot more of a natural position for your hips. I still haven't really met anyone who has perfectly straight hips. So if you are that person, go straight on. If you're not that person, what would probably be a great place to start with is your squat stance, okay? Pick a femur or thigh angle that's gonna be similar to your squat stance or whatever range of motion is most natural and neutral for your hips. Okay, so to go through it again, hands flat on the ground, forearms dropped right below shoulders. I want my knees underneath my hips, my feet slightly turned out. From here, okay, if we're gonna do just the legs, I'm just gonna take my good 360 degree breath, which means I'm gonna be expanding my waistband in all of the cardinal directions. Bracing, thinking about breathing down into my balls or into my pelvic floor. From there, I'm thinking about flattening my diaphragm and I'm really trying to visualize what it would look like for a domed muscle to flatten and what it would feel like to have that pressure go down into my abdomen. This is really gonna help me create a mind-muscle connection and facilitate what I'm trying to get after here. So remember, a lot of this is neurological. So hands flat, down the forearms, knees underneath hips, legs slightly turned out, similar to my squat stance, 360 degree bra breathing, 360 degree bra bracing, really slow and careful. I'm just gonna shoot back and I'm not gonna try to move at all. If you can hear me, you can tell it's challenging. But what we don't want is to like shift and extend. I can do this very easily if I just allow my body to shift and find stability. Like here, I'm just resting on this thigh and I could do this all day. What we want is you to actually have to support your body weight somewhere in the center of your four limbs the whole time using your abdominal wall and core musculature as you extend back. Notice I'm not shifting and extending, I'm not sliding and extending, shifting and extending. You shouldn't notice anything move the whole time. If you notice things moving, don't kick back so far. Your end range is your end range. There is no goal for how far you can kick back. The goal is just to challenge your spine and core stability which is just gonna happen by extending the leg. So if all I can do is extend the leg to there and I lose my position, coming back. 
So you can see on this side, if I extend back into there, and I lose it, I'm going to come back. So if I get there, if I go too far, you guys can see how that happened. Come back. Just stay in the range where you have movement proficiency and slowly try to increase how far that leg goes back. One way to think about it is the leg is just a lever arm. Okay, so it's just the way we're adding load. Little lever arm, lighter dumbbell, essentially. Longer lever arm, heavier dumbbell. Just like we have to work up to heavier dumbbells in our dumbbell movements, we have to work up to a longer lever or a more extended leg in this movement. Give it a try. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, when you're here, really try to push your forearm down into the ground, okay? Push the forearm down, then take your 360 degree breath and brace, and then extend back. Try it out, let us know what you think.